Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out swatching and creating looks with the new Huda Beauty Icy Nude Palette. Huda's last big palette, she is claiming. I have it with me. I cannot wait to swatch it and do a couple of looks with this one. I do want to do a five looks one palette separately as well. So if you're not subscribed to my channel yet and you want eyeshadow looks to create with your new palette, definitely subscribe before you leave. The first thing about this palette that immediately stood out to me is how different the actual outside packaging of the palette is because Huda usually makes it like all big letters across. She's got the new like lettering of her logo here on the side and it's honestly pretty plain looking if we consider the way her palettes usually look on the outside. However, I know that once we open it, it does look a bit more like what we're used to. So let's go ahead and go for it. This palette, by the way, is made in Italy and it has a 24 month shelf life. Huda always makes her big palettes that she's been releasing once a year for the past... I can actually do the math because I have them all. Nine years counting this one. She's released nine big palettes. Actually, maybe ten because there's one that's repeated. I'm not sure if that one was on a separate year. But I have nine palettes total if we count this one. So she always makes her once a year big palette releases in Italy. And they usually have a superb formulation. So I expect that from this one. Here's what the actual palette looks like big letters i see nude silver all around silver in the back as well and let's open it up first impressions it looks even better in person than it did on the pictures online and my camera just like the pictures i saw online is not really doing it justice everything looks a bit washed out let me try with my phone. Okay, yes, with my phone, things do look better. Take a look right there. This is pretty much what I am seeing <laughs> in real life. See, these three shades look the same on camera, but they are different. There's a shimmer, two mattes, one's pink, one's white. For the most part, the palette is pretty much all cool tone. And then we have these three warm shades right over here on this side. The next thing I immediately noticed is how beautiful the metallic glitter shades look. The palette, as you can see, has 18 shades total, which is, again, what we're used to from Huda. This one in particular has 11 different matte shades, three foiled shimmers, two triochromes, one biodegradable glitter, which I'm assuming assuming is the shade bling down here because this one looks pretty just glittery and then one duochrome metallic shade let's go ahead and get into the swatches i am dying to see what these look like on the skin here's what the first four shades look like we have the color iced out which i think is one of the ones she's claiming to be a multi-chrome shade I can see it, it has pink and purple and blue and then the pearly white that is mostly visible on camera. High Life, which is a matte rosy shade. Platinum, which is a foiled silver shimmer. And Unapologetic, which is another one of her mattes. Also, Unapologetic, I would say it's more on the neutral to warm side rather than cool. It definitely looks much more warmer once you swatch it than it did in the pan. Here are the next four shades. We have the color Faux Fur, which is a cool tone brown. Gold Standard, which is a foiled shimmer. Avalanche, which is like just a matte white eyeshadow. And the shade Aurora, which I'm assuming maybe it's a foiled shimmer shade. The next four shades are all matte. We have the color Poise, which is a gray taupey color. She Rich, which is a dark gray shade. Cold Plunge, which is a warm beige type shade. And then IDGAF, which is a pale pink color. I don't think these lack pigment, but they are very, very light and kind of close to the color of my skin. So they definitely don't stand out as much. I just realized I skipped a shade. I am so sorry. I'm going to swatch it right now. So I went from Aurora to Poised and I totally skipped VVS right here in the middle, which is one of the most exciting shimmers, honestly. So let me swatch that one. <laughs> 
Okay, so here are the next four shades and they are out of order. The first one here is the biodegradable glitter shade, which is called Bling. And it swatches horribly because I think we need glitter glue for it. It's like kind of loose, it's not creamy. The one next to that one is called Oneself, which is a very light, taupey, grayish color. And then the next shade is the one I skipped, which is called VVS. Actually, it would go right here. There's such little space, but I'll try. Right in the middle of those two. That's the shade VVS, where it should go. Um, and then I have the color Diamond Dew, which I'll put right down here. The issue I'm immediately having whilst swatching this palette is a lot of the shades, even though they do have different textures, look very similar. Like, there is a lot of very similar looking silvery type shades. Like, this metallic silver, this one is a different formula. The glitter that you can barely see because, again, not creamy because it's a glitter. And then this other shade down here called Diamond Dew. There's really few differences between those four shades, if I'm going to be honest. Texture-wise, yes, but color-wise, versatility-wise, not really. There's only two shades to go. We have the shade Lavish and the shade First Class. And those two shades conclude my swatches, which honestly left me wanting more and I want to do something to show you because I feel like a lot of the shades, not just the silver colors, a lot of the shades look very similar to one another, so I'll be right back. I'm back and I swatched the palette differently so that I could kind of highlight the colors that are kind of close to one another. None of the colors are exactly the same, but... There's a lot of similarities between them and so I wanted to show you. Here you go. Here's the palette swatched with the colors that look similar next to each other. Like these two rosy shades very close to one another. This is the white shade with the pink shade and the very light gray shade. Which again, once that is on the eye, I'm not sure how different those would be. These two dark shades also kind of close to one another and then there is the silvery looking shimmers which as you can see do definitely have you know different shifts to them but kind of also look a little repetitive. And so I wanted to show you the swatches like this so that you could see exactly what you're getting when you purchase this palette. Now that I showed you the swatches, let's begin creating a couple different eye looks with this palette. I'm going to start with the color Lavish. This one here on a rougher number 15 brush. And I'm going to make sure that color builds up nicely on the outer third of my eyelid and blends all throughout my crease. It is performing beautifully as you can see, even though it's a pretty light rosy pink type of shade. It builds up beautifully. It blends out beautifully. No complaints on my part about that one. It looks really nice on there. And then with a smaller blending brush, this one is a refer number one, I'm going to grab the shade Poised, which is this taupey gray type color, and I'm going to add it right over top of the pink to make things a little ashier and also to give this eye look a bit more dimension. And I'm going to blend that color poised into my rosy shade. As you can see, it is blending beautifully with just some back and forth motions with my brush. You can still see the first color on the upper side of the crease and then this one a little further down. And they've blended beautifully into one another. The formulas are fantastic so far. I know I've only tried two, but they are fantastic so far. I'm going to make it a little deeper. I'm going to go into the shade Chi Rich down here, still using the refer number one, and further intensify the outer third of my eye and smoke things up a little bit. Back with the shade Lavish and a refer number 15. I wanna make sure that shade prevails on the higher side of my crease. So I'm going back and re-blending it. With a thin blending brush and the shade She Rich, I'm going to smoke out my lower lash line. Just back and forth blending on the outer half of my under eye and making sure it meets with what I did on top. And then back with the shade Lavish. This is a rougher number 14. 
I'm going to blend things the rest of the way under my eye and smoke out that dark shade I put underneath my lower lash line. So far, things are looking really good everywhere that matters. Don't pay attention to that being patchy because we're going to put shimmers over top there. I'm going to do hmm, VVS, this one here, with my finger. And I'm just going to tap it right in the center of my eyelid. The shade VVS and the shade Diamond Dew have a very similar formula. And they both feel super creamy. And so with my finger, I am just patting it right in the center of my eyelid. Back with the color She Rich on my number one. And I'm going to make sure things look nice and smoky back here by tapping that color. And I did get a little fallout under my eyes. So be more careful than I was. I'm going to grab the shade Platinum with a flat brush. This one is a rougher number 28. And I'm going to add that color to the inner third of my eyelid just by tapping it in place and I'm also going to define my eyelid space with it a bit just like so and then with that same brush I'm going to grab the shade iced out which is going to be my inner corner color and I'm going to tap it right there so before I put on any eyeliner or any lashes this right here is the finished first look I do have some mascara on my top lashes I just added some eyeliner to my waterline. This is the Le Mercier eyeliner in the shade Coco. And before I finish up my mascara and I put on some falsies, let's jump on to look number two. I'm going to start with the shade hmm, High Life as my transition shade. And I'm once again using my ref for number 15 to blend it. A little bit more on the outer third. This one is a bit more cool tone than the transition shade I used for the other eye, but like barely. The difference isn't super noticeable. And it is very pigmented and blending beautifully. I'm going to grab the light pink shade to smoke out the top of this one. Honestly, just to try it, I don't really see myself getting a lot of use out of either one of these very light colors here, the white or the very light pink. See, I feel like that barely made a difference. It was already blended <laughs> nicely. Anyways, let me keep going. What do I want to do next? I'm going to grab the shade Unapologetic. This one up here. Adding it to the outer third of my eyelid and blending it into the crease. And I'm using a Shoto 00 brush for this from Refer. A little bit more of that color. Once again, blending it into my crease. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the shade Faux Fur and smoke out the outer third of my lash line with it. Just making things a little darker on the outer half of my eyelid. A little more to make things really nice and smoky back here. I'm going to go into the shade Aurora with my finger and I'm going to tap Aurora right here in the center of the eyelid, blending it back. I haven't used a glitter glue in forever and with the amount of shine that modern eyeshadows have, I feel like we don't need glitter eyeshadow anymore because like this is shiny enough in my opinion, but I do have some glitter glue probably expired from Too Faced, rest in peace. They don't make this anymore, which is a huge shame, not because of its glitter glue use, but because it was an excellent primer for oily eyelids. Anyways, I'm going to grab some of that glitter glue and add it to the inner third of my eyelid because I want to try this biodegradable glitter shade that swatches like an absolute disgrace on my eyelid. So I'm placing the glitter glue with a flat brush and I'm going for it. Here's the shade Bling and I'm going to tap it, tap, tap, tap it where I applied the glitter glue. I did it. Here's that glitter applied and here's the eye look so far. Once again, I'm using eye style on my inner corner and with the shade Faux Fur, I'm going to smoke out my lower lash line all the way to my tear duct area. And I'm going to blend that out with the shade High Life on a refer number 14. Just back and forth blending everything. I just used the same eyeliner for the waterline of this eye, which is Coco from Laura Mercier. And before I fix up my mascara and put on falsies, this right here is the finished second look. I definitely wanted to use a glitter for an eye look and I'm glad I did. It does look beautiful. That is undeniable. <laughs> So check it out, this right here is look number two. Back with my makeup fully finished, I put on Bright Lashes in the style Adorn. 
finished up my bottom lash mascara, put on my Laura Mercier blush in the shade Chai, and then the lips are Anastasia Beverly Hills lip liner taupe, and then the lip gloss is Dusty Rose. Every single thing I'm wearing on my face, as per usual, is listed and linked down in the description box. And so check it out, these are looks one and two right here. And I'm going to go back to what I was saying about a lot of the shades looking super similar to one another. I don't have any single shade that is the same on both of my eye looks. The only thing that is the same is the color of my waterline eyeliner. Every single shade is different. The crease shade is different, the smoky shade is different, center of the eyelid's different. Oh, I do have the same inner corner highlighter for both eye looks, but every other shade is different, yet the eye looks look very similar to one another, which goes back to a lot of the shades being just slightly different from one another and the color story not being super versatile, in my opinion. Is it a beautiful palette? 100% it is. Do the shades perform beautifully? One thousand percent they do. They are pigmented and blendable and super easy to work with. You can create eye looks in an instant, but a lot of the shades are super similar to one another, which makes this palette not a palette with which you can create super diverse eyeshadow looks, in my opinion. Again, I love it and it's beautiful. I see myself getting used out of it, but I can't not point out that a lot of the shades seem repetitive to me. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the new Huda Beauty Icy Nude Eyeshadow Palette. Is it beautiful? Yes. Does it perform amazing? Yes. Is it an eyeshadow palette with which you're going to get a huge variety of eyeshadow looks? Not really. If these are the types of looks that you're into and you are interested in purchasing this palette, I do have it linked down below in the description box. I have it tagged on the video for you as well. Please grab it using my links if you want to support my channel. Again, performance-wise, I do recommend it. Just think about whether or not these are shades that you're going to be reaching for all that much. I think I have to do a rankings video of all of the new palettes available at Sephora and I'll let you know which one is my favorite and how I rank them in that video. That will be a lot of fun. If you guys liked today's video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Subscribe to my channel if you like honest reviews like this one. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.